Okay. Well, here we go. In another life, this was the place where I did hard drive rebuilds as the wooden bed bits. Now the white stuff is going to be the body that we're going to paint. The black stuff uh, will be part of the body too. We have a shelving base, interior bits and pieces by the look of it. Tires, plastic wheels. There are metal wheels available too. Put that over there. As far as electronics go, now we have grease for the axles. It'll be thread locked, that blue stuff. Um, I'll put a better. Oh, I guess we'll test this servo first. And I'll unsolder these LEDs and stick some um, heat shrink over them. Maybe shorten the cables a bit. So there's lights. Bunch of screws. We've got um, ball ends for. Oh, look at that, interesting. Ball ends for uh, the um, the shafts on the on the uh, links. Screws for that. Drive shafts, two-speed gearbox. This is a slightly different. Let's have a look here. Hang on. The B36KM. Yeah, it is. Oh no, it is the same. So it's, this is the. It appears to be the same gearbox. So I have a problem with the uh, B36 in that it's not reliably selecting. The way it works is there's a servo. Just a little um, ellipsis on the end of the servo, and it pushes this thing back and forth, and it slides in this piece of plastic. But it's it's not terribly accurate. Um, so we'll uh, we'll check this out. Everything else about it though has been quality, and that, there's the shifting servo too, of course. That's a bit smaller than the other one. Put that over there. Get the B36 out of the way. Okay. What else we got? The top of the uh, cruiser. Wheel weights, not going to need them in here really, but stick them in the corner. Diffs, nice and heavy actually, that's good. The bearings are not rubber booted, so one thing I think I might do, I've got a bunch of bearings here. These are open bearings, which means as soon as you hit any water that's not pure, if there's any kind of particulate matter in them, they're going to clog up really quick. So rubber boots will be good for bearings. And um, the, I don't like the way that WPL does this, but they let you fit the, the axles a little bit more snugly using those um, gaskets, paper gaskets. Um, we might still need to use them, but I don't like them. And the rest of the body frame, which has arrived perfectly intact. A bit dirty, but that's okay. We'll sand this back and give it a nice coat of paint. That's that. Metal chassis. Screens, with screen and windows and light lenses. And, sorry about that terrible noise. Um, the only thing that's left is some stickers. And that's that. That is the empty box. So here we are. The the 44. Now, before we start, this is the nature of the instructions. That's the answers. It's got, having done this before for the uh, B36, I I found they were reasonably good for a cheap model. Um, they're not on the same uh, level of quality as what you get in some of the big kits, but they're sufficient. Looking through, I see nothing that's going to be a problem. And I would almost there you go. I would say um, if you haven't built a model before, uh, this will be confusing, and you're going to make some mistakes. It's not the worst, but it's uh, in fact it's far from the worst. There are definitely worse manuals I've had uh, recently, even, but um, it's not as straightforward. If you've built Lego kits before, um, the Axial and uh, um, who else? Patera. The tracks as I have yet to see, but the, the, the manuals for those things are usually pretty good.
I'm going to leave the body for now because I'm going to want to paint before I assemble. If you assemble the body first then you've got to muck around with masking which is not something I want to do. So we're going to paint what needs painting. First I'm going to build the axles, I'll put the chassis together as well, we've got the metal rails here of course. Um, the wheels I'll stick together as well. Um, might make some foams for those. I think rubber's lovely and soft, but these weights are enormous. I might even avoid using these weights altogether, actually. I didn't like them very much in the B36, and it looks like the same setup. So I think what we'll do instead... Wait right there. That's what we'll do. I've got a uh, solder. The thicker, the better. I did have some lovely... Uh, double the, this diameter of uh, plumber's solder, but um, this stuff makes really nice wheel weights. Now you do need to be aware that it's uh, got lead. It's better to get one without lead if you can, although <laughs> lead is also uh, very dense, which is where your weight comes from. But uh, you do the same number of winds around the front wheels, and then you maybe do 30% less winds around the rear wheels. Just put some flat tape around that. I've got some nice skinny tape we'll put around that, some uh, fabric tape. And that, it won't weigh as much as this, although these two are pretty similar in weight, interestingly. That's, again, the lead helping here. Um, it will be more compact than this stuff, which is uh, steel. Or, I mean, iron, I should say. Some low-quality alloy it'll be, but... Uh, I don't like how fat it makes the... Uh, it makes this really big fat disc, and so that the tyres don't have much... Um, chance to conform. This way we can we can wrap the uh, solder around the wheels, thin tape and then I'll make some foams which means I'll cut some nice thin foam uh, and I use fabric tape which I also can show you. Here we go, so fabric tape. Um, I use the, the 19 mil version of this in audio installs. It's uh, just a really nice fabric tape. Put the uh, the flat tape around that then I'll make foams, little thin strips of foam that will... Uh, uh, I'll cut them as thick as the tire, actually, that's how you do it. I'll show you when I, when I get to that. Then you hold it together with uh, just a little bit of foam, or perhaps glue. You want the foam to be able to move nicely. Then the tire goes on, um, just a drop of uh, super glue in the bead, and it kind of runs around. You don't want too much glue. And then um, off you go. We'll have some nice weighted wheels, and they'll have plenty of movement in them. Uh, they won't be ridiculous and... Um, uh, they, they'll be able to actually compress like you want them to compress. So I'm going to build this uh, body, uh, this uh, chassis first and the running gear, and then we'll do the body after I paint. I always like to get everything spread out uh, section by section. Um, if you haven't done a model like this before, um, you want to make sure that you've got your instructions at hand. I'm ignoring ignore the metal filings here too. I'm ignoring the body instructions for now. I'll come back to them once I've done the painting, like I said before. I'm doing the um, chassis and the axles, so that's what I've got in front of me. I've started here already. I've already done the little bottom bit with the uh, ball ends. Um, right now I'm going to build the suspension, so I can see I've got all my parts out. These guys at the bottom, these guys at the top, we've got springs, and we've got the four uh, long uh, shock shafts there. Um, it's metal going to plastic, so we won't need any thread lock for that. Uh, and so once they're on, it will sit to the side, and then I'll move on to the next step. So everything's just organized. You do it step by step. Um, for anything when I get to it, and I probably won't put this on camera because, again, there are other build videos online. Uh, I generally pull things apart when I begin with them, including something like this. And I'll have a look inside, I'll make sure that there are no burrs or uh, loose bits and pieces in there that shouldn't be there. I'll make sure everything's greased. This is covered in a, well it was, it was covered in a light um, coating of oil, very thin oil. Um, so we'll need to uh, make sure it actually has some kind of proper grease on it. The grease that these things come with, it won't be anything super special but it does have a high viscosity which means it's not just going to fling off when rotating parts start to rotate and that's what you want um, these will be good in the uh, 
in the um, diffs as well. I use uh, Panrite Molly Grease. It's a marine product. It comes in a tub. I've had it. <laughs> I've had it for um, eight or ten years, and I'm only about a third of the way through the tub. And it's a brilliant, brilliant investment. It cost me, oh, I don't know, twelve or fifteen dollars or something like that. But anyway, any moving parts, anywhere there's metal involved, you just need a little bit of some kind of uh, high, uh, sorry, low viscosity grease, like this, something that's kind of gooey that's going to hang around and then that will uh, generally be enough for the life of models like this that aren't going to get driven a lot. If you are going to drive something a lot, particularly if it's going to get wet, uh, pulling it apart back to the to the point where you can see gears and stuff, uh, it's never a bad idea every so often. Um, and I did say this before but I'll say it again now that everything's out and we're talking. These bearings are not good, they, they have no kind of uh, protection. But the bearings that have the, the rubber rings around them, um, protecting protecting them, keeping them closed, that's the kind of thing you want if you're going to do anything to do with water. Hmm. These springs are too stiff. Hmm. No, they're not too stiff. A heavy rig. So we're doing this stage, uh, we've got the, where are we, oh, it's hiding, we've got the servo gear uh, shifter in there, the servo and the gear shift for your second gear, as it moves in it pushes it down, it's quite close to these guys actually but it seems to be the way they want it so that's fine, we pre-assembled the shocks already and they fit Obviously we're not doing this one here, but the plastic that little hole fits through there. And you do up one of these bigger screws. So they pivot. You can do it up tightly because if you can see that, it clears through the through the metal. So there's um there's some clearance here. So these guys can move just fine. What I'm going to do is I, I always put everything off one side, so we'll put the uh, the back bracket out of here and uh, we'll put the suspension in on that side too, we'll stick, and let's pop this out. You may not worry about painting the black bits with one exception, the, uh, the front grille I might turn that into silver, just the um, just the raised part for the front of the truck. But for this black stuff, we're not going to worry about painting it. And indeed, we want some of it to stay black because it's going to match the frame, which I'll also keep black. Some, some frames, such as the C24 you might recognize from another video. I've done the entire chassis all in brown. Uh, I think I'll leave this one black. That'll be the rear bumper. Oops, that was more, more effective. So let's pop that off. I'll leave that there. We need these guys right now. We don't need them. And we do need this cross beam. Where is it? Here we are. So that's the trusses for each axle. For the uh, the links will sit into those things. Uh, we got the what the side mirrors. Yep and this cross beam, which is that fellow there. So, I should put the rest of this back. As I did this, this one up here, I thought to myself how hard it would be 
to be doing it with one of the included tools. Now it's nice to have an included tool, but for that, or for this screw here, which is the uh, the bumper, you get a um, you've got to go through this this shaped thing here. So the screw is going down through uh, that there and into into that kind of hole. It's a heck of a lot easier if you have a nice long screwdriver. Um, I've got a short stumpy one that's comfortable to use uh, for some of these these screws. And as long as you get the right the size, as Phillips have one PH one, it's a it's got a nice fit to it. Oh, now this uh, this is a 3.0, so it's the that's there are five sizes of miniature uh, Phillips heads. This is a 3.0 or a 3mm by 150 mil, so 15 centimeter or three inches the shaft, I think, uh, and that makes this job so much easier because I can fit it in like that rather than having to try and wrestle and bump up against this. Now this is a self tapper here so you know when you're in because it, it butts up against it. It's a much broader thread but these guys, that's that thread, that's that's not a self tapper. That when you're going straight into plastic where it doesn't have a tapped thread, which these don't, uh, it's kind of cutting its own thread and acting like a self tapping thread which is these guys, these much more broad threads. I trust you can see the difference here. Um, so going into plastic with these, you really want to be cautious. These guys, they will just stop and you really have to be ham fisted to, uh, to over crank it. So I've just done it up pretty tightly and it just it gets to a point where it just stops. Anyway, I'll continue putting things in down the side and I'll talk to you in a sec. Those two steps are done. We've got, I'll angle it so you can see on the side, we've got all four shocks with the springs inside. They're not really shocks, they're just enclosed springs really. There's no oil. You saw me assemble them before. It's just a screw and a um, and a spring. We've got our shifting servo. I guess that's a 380. And yeah. Right, onto the diffs. Let's get the diffs done. 